Thank you very much, Philip, and thanks to all the organizers, of course, and especially to Philip and Alina for helping me very much with the uh, virtual uh, modality that I am uh, not uh, practical. So uh, uh, let me start. So I will survey in this talk on, over some results which are uh, actually known since uh, a few years, uh, but I will probably, perhaps they will not so well known to all of the audience. And uh, I will present <clears throat> also some applications which uh, seem uh, newer. So the, the context uh, is uh, of elliptic families and the, probably the best known is uh, the Legendre, of course, that you can see the equation. And uh, uh, we have the parameter lambda. This parameter lambda varies over what we call the base. And the, the uh, base B now is the projective line minus three points. And if lambda is inside this space, then the equation defines, in fact, an elliptic curve because the polynomial on the right has no multiple roots. And uh, I write the elliptic curve in a, a fine form, but let us think of its projective completion in P2. So uh, we always think that there is a further point at, at infinity. So, uh, so we have a family for varying lambda, but we, an alternative viewpoint is that we can think of lambda as a variable and also see the equation as defining an elliptic curve over the field, for instance, of rational functions of lambda with the coefficient, complex coefficients or coefficients in some other field. And then another, uh, another important uh, uh, objects in my talk are sections. What is a section? It is a function from the base to, to the family with the property that uh, the property is uh, written at the bottom of the page for a section, the value at a point of the base must lie in the elliptic curve corresponding to that point. So there is a drawing here and uh, the drawing is not quite precise. Uh, in fact, the point B is not uh, thought as lying in LB, but rather the curve LB corresponds to B. And you can see the image of the section. It is a curve in the space of uh, all elliptic curves. And uh, let me give two examples. One is the zero section. So the, each elliptic curve has a group law and we can take uh, an origin in each elliptic curve. The origin, uh, I choose it uh, as usual, this point. And uh, the section, uh, the zero section associates to each point on the base, the, the origin. There is a slight abuse of language because this origin, in fact, depends on lambda because it lies in the elliptic curve lying above lambda. But as a point in P2, it is always the same. And then let me give another example. Uh, what I call them a Masser's section because David Masser proposed this as a simple example of, of section to pose some of his problems which motivated uh, uh, the work which uh, in part I am going to describe. So th this Masser's section is obtained by fixing the X coordinate in the elliptic equation x equal to and then uh, y uh, has this value we may recover it from the equation and uh, of course there is a choice of the sign so we, we if we want to be precise we have to think as the section as defined not over the original base but on a quadratic cover of it so where where the sign is well defined but otherwise we can may forget about this precision, but 
Okay, so for these sections, we consider the torsion set. It is the set of points of the base where the value of the section is a torsion point in the respective elliptic curve. The elliptic curve has a group law, so uh, we have the torsion points. Uh, they are the points such that some uh, positive multiple is uh, uh, the origin is zero. And we have this set of points. So, and there are, uh, let us start by looking at the so-called trivial case, is when the section is itself torsion. So it is torsion identically on considering lambda as a variable. This may happen, and uh, an example is, for instance, uh, written here. If on the Legendre curve you take the point with the uh, x coordinate lambda, the y coordinate will be zero, and this uh, has torsion of order two identically. So in this case, since the section is identically torsion, of course, every value of the section will be torsion actually of the same order. And uh, we have that uh, the torsion set T sigma is equal to the whole base. And now uh, an issue, let me pause uh, just a moment on the issue, how to check whether a torsion is whether a section is torsion or not. In, this, in the case of the example, this is trivial, but we might have a complicated section given by complicated functions, and uh, it may not be immediately clear how to check this. And there are, for this, it is effective. However, there are several methods. Uh, a method is from Galois theory, because uh, the Galois group uh, arising from torsion sections are uh, quite large. So by looking at the Galois group of the functions, uh, algebraic functions which appear, we may detect whether uh, a section is or not a torsion. Then we have a height theory. The torsion sections have a zero canonical height in the functional sense. And uh, there are other methods, uh, still other methods. One method is due to Manin by looking at uh, differential equations. And uh, another criterion, let me mention it because it is often very practical. It comes from reduction theory. And uh, you may read it. If the section is torsion, then the field of definitions of the algebraic functions, uh, which appear as the coordinates of the section, uh, they generate a field uh, which is unramified over the ground field C of lambda. Unramified outside the points of bed reduction, zero, one, and infinity. And uh, this criterion, you may see the example, uh, Masser section is not torsion. We may immediately see this from this criterion because the master's section, you see it, it is, uh, it has this square root of uh, two times two minus lambda. So the minimal field of definition is ramified over two, over lambda equal two, and uh, this goes out of the bad reduction. So it is, it cannot be torsion. And uh, let me also uh, recall this uh, result, which is not, uh, well known as I would uh, have expected. For the Legendre family, this criterion is also a sufficient condition, which means that uh, if uh, we have a section uh, unramified uh, outside zero, one, and infinity, then it is necessarily torsion. This was proved by Shioda already in the 70s using uh, elliptic, uh, theory of elliptic surfaces. But uh, recently with uh, Pietro Corvaia, we gave a proof depending on modular function. Anyway, let us uh, forget about this now. And uh, let us suppose that the sigma is not a torsion identical. 
And then we ask what can be said about the torsion set. The torsion set, you see, it is uh, uh, the set of points where the, the value of the section is torsion. Now we suppose that the section is not identically torsion, and we ask when it becomes torsion. So this uh, is somewhat when the structure of the section is different, uh, uh, becomes different on specializing. And uh, we may say a few things about this set. And the first observation is that it is a small in a sense. If everything, for instance, is, is defined over the field of algebraic numbers, then the result of Silverman Tate proved already in the 80s. And uh, this set of torsion, uh, uh, of torsion values, say, is a set of algebraic points of bounded height. So this is quite a strong result. Uh, the set uh, shows that the set is very sparse. For instance, it contains only finitely many points of bounded degree over Q. Only finitely many rational points, but also finitely many quadratic irrationals and so on. And uh, before this result of Silverman data, there was some work of Neron who used this uh, to construct uh, elliptic curves of uh, larger rank, but uh, that was somewhat weaker. Not really weaker in the logical sense, but uh, the result of Silverman data is very, very strong and efficient for applications. And uh, let me mention another result uh, very interesting uh, about the set T sigma was proved by DeMarco and Mabraki around 2015, they proved that in a suitable sense that I will not explain for time reasons, it is attributed. So let me just mention that this Galois refers to the set of value of points on the base. So it has nothing to do with the Galois groups of the torsion points. Uh, we are looking at the points where the section becomes torsion. And they are algebraic points with a certain Galois group, but this Galois group is very difficult to understand. And uh, this is a result uh, about this Galois group. And uh, the set is Galois equidistributed. So the conjugates go somewhat everywhere on the base uh, with respect to certain measure. So this shows that uh, the result of Silverman Tate shows that T sigma is uh, small in a sense, but uh, we may also look from the other viewpoint and uh, say that T sigma is not too small. For instance, we may expect that it is infinite. Why? Because uh, we are looking uh, at the points where the section becomes torsion, but we do not fix the order of torsion. So we allow any possible torsion order. And so for each order, we can expect to find some point where the section has just this order. And uh, by taking the union, we may expect that the set is infinite. And indeed it is. Although this is less, trivial to prove, at least to my knowledge, than what, uh, than what one uh, could perhaps expect. One proof, for instance, uh, can be given depending on Siegel's theorem on integral points over function fields. So this is not a difficult like the number field case, but uh, still it is not completely trivial. So th this gives uh, is an ingredient to prove that this sigma is infinite. But a much uh, more precise result can be proved either by the method of uh, Mavraki and Marco, but also using the so-called Betty map of a section. I want to define the Betty map. Uh, however, just to mention uh, uh, this Betty map, uh, 
we look, since uh, every elliptic curve is uh, uh, holomorphically equivalent uh, to a complex torus, one looks at the values of the section, not um, in the elliptic curve model, in the algebraic model, but in the tori. And uh, using the periods, one may define this Betty map. So it is defined in terms of elliptic logarithm. And it has been studied recently by, it was studied implicitly introduced by Manin, if not before. And recently we have studied it with uh, Ivan Dre and Pietro Corvaia, but also independently, Philip Haberger and Jian Gao have studied it with applications and Claire Boisang also for other applications to algebraic geometry. So using this Betty map of the section, one proves that uh, the set of uh, torsion values is dense in the complex topology. So this shows that it is not too small. It is small in a sense, but not too small. And uh, if we look at the real values, uh, uh, we, can, we can look at the real points on the base, for instance, uh, for master section, we can look at the real values of lambda where the section takes uh, torsion values. And uh, still the Betty map implies that uh, this is dense, uh, again, also in the fields. And uh, with Brian Lawrence, we have proved, however, that it is never dense in the periodic points in the algebraic closure. So there is a marked difference of behavior <clears throat> uh, from the Archimedean viewpoint and non-Archimedean. Okay, let us now consider a second section. So our first section will be the master section. And uh, let me choose this as a second section. So you can see that this lies in the Legendre uh, elliptic curve. Again, we have a base, we have to take another quadratic cover to be well-defined. And we may ask, Masser asked uh, long ago, before 2010, he asked uh, about the set of values of lambda where both sections become torsion. And uh, so he expected uh, that uh, since for each section, the set of torsion values of lambda is sparse, uh, then if we take the intersection, uh, then it is even more sparse and probably finite. And we proved this in 2010, around 2010. So for instance, for these two sections, the former uh, section and this one, the intersection of the two sets is finite. And uh, I should uh, <coughs> remark that here we allow lambda to be any complex number. Uh, so any, uh, it will be automatically algebraic if it lies in the set, but uh, we do not put any restriction on that degree or we forget about any, any such restriction. So we prove this finiteness and uh, let me say that the finiteness requires uh, two kinds of checking so that P and Q are not identically torsion, which is a necessary condition to obtain, of course, finiteness. But we have also to check that P and Q are not linearly dependent because if we had a linear dependence uh, holding identically, then it is easy to see that uh, being torsion for one section forces the other to be torsion as well. And then uh, we would obtain an infinite set. So the finiteness requires uh, some high assumptions on the sections, but otherwise it holds. And indeed there are generalizations 
to several sections or even to a billion pencils. So not, not only in elliptic curves, we may generalize with similar finiteness conclusion. Uh, let me only recall two results that I will uh, use later. If we want the simultaneous torsion, like in the example that I gave, then uh, if the sections do not map in a subgroup family, which amounts to be linearly independent in, in our case, then we have finiteness. This was proved jointly with uh, Massa. And the Barroero and Capuano, uh, a few years ago, treated arbitrary families, and they proved a more general result because they did not uh, require the families to be torsion, but just to lie in subgroup families of codimension two or more. So this is milder if we work in, a, in an ambient of high dimensions, this is a milder condition than requiring torsion. And uh, still, if the codimension is uh, uh, two and uh, they intersect with the union of subgroup families, then uh, they obtain finiteness under the appropriate assumptions that I are technical and I don't want to uh, recall them in precision, but I hope this is sufficient to give an idea of the result. Let me say that uh, Gioca, Sia and Tucker had done uh, some special cases of this result before. So it went beyond the torsion, but uh, not as generally as the Barroero and Capuano. Let me give now some applications. So recall that for the Masser section, I have rewritten it, the set of real, of real uh, values of lambda, real values B of lambda, for which P of B is torsion, is dense. Is dense, of course, I have to assume that P of B is real. So I require that uh, <laughs> B is a real number less than two. And uh, there are an infinity, this is dense. Uh, in the, in the half-line uh, uh, lambda less than two. And uh, this may be proved with the Betty map. Now suppose I change the problem uh, apparently by a little, and I ask for the purely imaginary torsion values instead of the real torsion values. So, and uh, now we obtain finiteness. There are only somewhat surprisingly, perhaps not so surprisingly, but uh, the formulation may seem similar. Uh, we prescribe here real, and uh, we obtain dense, and here we prescribe purely imaginary, and, and we obtain only finitely many. And the, the reason at bottom is that the set of purely imaginary uh, does not form a subgroup, but anyway, let me state in precision, so there are only finitely many t in a real t, such that p of i t is torsion where? Of course, in the corresponding elliptic curve, the, the one in the Legendre family with the, the parameter lambda equal to i t. Let me sketch the proof, which is very simple. And uh, with the trick that we used also elsewhere with, with David Massa. So suppose that P of IT is torsion inside the, the corresponding elliptic curve. Then we conjugate and we obtain that the conjugate point is torsion on another elliptic curve, the conjugate elliptic curve. And the conjugate now is obtained just by changing sign. So now we have two torsion sections, now in two families, the family L lambda and L minus lambda. So it is, 
we are in the situation of the former issue with two torsion sections, but now the elliptic families are not the same. And in fact, it may be checked that they are not isogenous, these two families. So the product family, since they are not isogenous, as may be proved uh, quite easily, but let us forget about this issue, it can be proved. And then this <coughs> implies that the abelian family consisting of the fiber product over the lambda line has no non-trivial subgroup family. And so this means that the assumption of independence of the two sections is automatically satisfied. You remember that in the theorem that uh, we had uh, uh, before the, this one, uh, if the sections, the first one, we, we need for finiteness, we need to know that uh, the sections do not map in the subgroup family. And here this is automatic because the curves are not isogenous. So we apply just the previous result and we obtain finiteness of the purely imaginary torsion values contrary to the real uh, torsion values. And uh, one uh, may generalize, this has never written down, but I believe one may generalize to real curves defined in the complex plane by algebraic equations relating uh, real and imaginary parts. Now let me go to the main applications which concerns elliptical billiards. The issue of the elliptical billiards uh, goes back to long ago. I owe it to Peter Sarnak a reference of the astronomer Jesuit priest Boscovich, who studied elliptic billiards already in the 18th century. Uh, so it, and it has been studied uh, also later, mainly by Poncelet, Jacobi, and uh, many others. And until recently, this uh, topic uh, has uh, attracted interest. Uh, let me uh, say a few things. So the elliptical billiard is, consists of a table bounded by an ellipse. And uh, we may think to play a billiard game and uh, with the usual reflection law, so the, each shot, each trajectory uh, hits the border, the ellipse C, and uh, becomes reflected uh, by the rule that the two segments form equal angles with the tangent at the point where it hits the boundary and we obtain this billiard trajectory. It is a very interesting theorem capable of a Euclidean proof, elementary proof by geometry, but somewhat subtle proof, that if we start a billiard trajectory, then all segments in the trajectory are tangent to the same, to a same conic, which is confocal with the original ellipse. It has the same foci. And it may be an ellipse or a hyperbola. In the picture, you see it is an ellipse. The caustic, it is called the caustic. So the trajectory is described by drawing successive tangents to this caustic. We may also write equations. For instance, you can see the equations for the caustic, for the ellipse. And uh, let us uh, so to frame this uh, picture. Uh, we may view the thing as follows, that the tangents to the caustic uh, are points are identified by points in the so-called dual conic. The dual conic is a conic which parameterizes the tangents to the original conic. This is well known a projective geometry going back to centuries ago. And the billiard shot, 
we may view as a billiard shot as a pair consisting of a point on the boundary of the ellipse and the line, and that the line is tangent to the caustic. So we may view the billiard shot once we know the caustic as a pair consisting of a, a point and the line. So lying in the product ellipse times the dual, the dual of the caustic. And the point lies on the line. And for a given caustic, these pairs form a curve of genus one. And so the Jacobian is an elliptic curve. And what is a, and we have the billiard map, the billiard map associated to such a pair. So to a point on this curve, it associates another point on this curve. It is an automorphism of the curve of genus one. Once that we have the caustic. Of course, corresponding to a given point, we may choose, we may have several caustics depending on the shot, on the direction where we hit the ball. And the theorem, famous theorem of Poncelet, and the Jacobi gave a proof in terms of elliptic curves, that beta is a translation in the Jacobian. So uh, it depends only on the caustic. And uh, so the billiard map is like doing a translation in this elliptic curve. And uh, it follows that the trajectory is periodic if and only if the translation is torsion. This was a part of a theorem of Poncelet for the so-called games of Poncelet. Anyway, so let, let us uh, play some billiard games, uh, possible billiard games. So we take the first point on the border, the point P naught with coordinates minus one and zero. We chose a slope Xi and the corresponding to the slope, we have a caustic and the rule is very easy to find. And this is written here. The, the parameter S square of the caustic is related to the slope by the equation that you see. And the, it turns out that this elliptic family has the Legendre parameter given by S square divided by C square, where C uh, defines the ellipse. See, you may take a real number less than one. And uh, we may prove easily that, so we have a section because the billiard map gives a section to each slope. We have a point, we have a family of elliptic curves, depending on each caustic defines an elliptic curve. So we have a family. And uh, for each uh, uh, element of the family, we have a billiard uh, translation because of the theorem of Poncelet Jacobi. And so we have a section. And this section is not torsion. This is uh, trivial in a way because it just says that not all billiard trajectories are periodic. So it is very easy to prove by continuity. And we may actually prove that there are billiard trajectories of any given period. Uh, it is, uh, we, we may use a variational principle. If we take inside the ellipse, a polygon of N, we choose an integer N, positive integer N, and we take a polygon of N sides and maximal length. And uh, it is easy to see by the principle of Fermat, Heron uh, Fermat, uh, this is a Bayer trajectory. And uh, so we, by compactness, we find one, and by the theorem of Poncelet, we may assume that the vertex is in P naught because the periodicity does not depend on the vertex. And those, uh, there are trajectories periodic of any given order, which is quite intuitive. A non-periodic trajectory will uh, be dense in the shaded region. 
which also is uh, rather intuitive and can be proved easily by this description. Here in the picture, you see a hyperbolic caustic. And that the slopes of the periodic trajectories correspond to the torsion set because that uh, it is the trajectory is periodic only if the section given by the billiard map uh, uh, assumes a torsion value. So we this provides the link with the previous context. Let me do an example with two players. So we have two players playing in a billiard, uh, elliptical billiard, and uh, suppose that they start that they start at P not at the same point, P naught, and the play. So the first player chooses a slope, for instance, and the second player uses the same slope but uh, increasing the angle by a fixed amount, alpha. So, and one can ask how often will both trajectories be periodic? And the answer is only finitely many times. So let me remark for, that for usual rectangular billiards, this is usually false for a dense set of angles. And uh, actually one may go further and prove that uh, if we have a billiard defined by a parallelogram, then the finiteness holds if and only if the parallelogram defines an, a lattice with no complex multiplication in, in C. So uh, also for the usual billiards, uh, the question makes sense, but uh, the finiteness uh, does not always hold. So uh, let, me, let me give a sketch of the proof that we have finiteness of this situation where both, both trajectories are periodic, where we require that uh, the directions form a fixed angle. Now we have two sections. We have two billiard maps corresponding to the two play players. And both sections individually are not torsion. So we are asking now where, when both sections will assume torsion values simultaneously, like in the problem posed by Masser. And again, the obstruction, the, the, the results that we proved gives finiteness unless, unless the sections are dependent. But again, to show that the sections now are not dependent, it suffices to show that the two families are not isogenous. And again, uh, this is a not difficult matter. Uh, one uses, for instance, the, uh, the fact that uh, if two elliptic curves are isogenous, then their J invariants satisfy a modular equation and, uh, and uh, the modular equations are monic. Uh, so each of the J values is integral over the ring generated by the other one. And uh, so there is a verification that I will skip and uh, it is possible to use this criterion with modular equation to show that the families are not isogenous. It suffices to compute the lambda and uh, the J invariant, once we know the lambda, to compare the two J invariants and uh, looking at the poles, one concludes that uh, there cannot be integrality of each one over the ring generated by the other. Let me give a second example of, of billiard with a hole. So we have a hole and two balls, A and B. Our task is to hit B with the, with the first ball so that B goes eventually to the hole. And we may hit B directly or we may first hit the border and then go to B and so on. So there are infinitely many ways in which we can 
hit uh, B with A. And uh, we ask uh, in how many of these ways then B will go to the hole. So to discover all the possibilities that send B eventually into the hole. LA of our elliptic family corresponding to the choice of the slope and the winning slope must obey two conditions. First, we want that uh, for some integer m, after m rebounds, we reach the ball b. And then the second uh, uh, condition is that for another integer, the shot from b goes to the hole. So we have two conditions. And uh, we remark that uh, we think of the game as being such, such that when A hits B, then B will continue in the same direction, the same trajectory of A. So this is like asking that the trajectory from A goes eventually to H, but passes first through B. And now we may also use the Jacobi proof of Poncelet theorem, which the previous correspondence with elliptic families. And uh, we may translate into two conditions among three sections. So we have uh, two sections associated to B and the whole, and we have this system. So the, this system describes two linear dependence condition on the sections. And uh, now we again can deduce finiteness by using, for instance, the result by Barroero and Capuano, but we have to verify that uh, the three sections are linearly independent. This may be done uh, with some more difficulty than in the previous cases that I illustrated. And uh, this may be done, so we, we recover this result that uh, is stated. There are only finitely many slopes sending B eventually into the hole. And uh, there is an exception when A and B are the two foci of the ellipse. And in this case, every slope sends A to B. And for an infinity of slopes, B goes into H. So this is a true exception. The finiteness theorem, let me remark, it could be proved even uh, with, uh, with weaker results than Barroero and Capuano due to Gioca, Sia, and Tucker. So let me, the last few minutes, uh, give an alternative description and formulate a general problem. Uh, to describe the billiard, uh, elliptical billiard, we may also work with the surface uh, taken, obtained by the square of the ellipse, C times C. So the pairs of points on the ellipse. You see in the picture, we have a pair of points. If they are distinct, they define a, a line. Also, if they are equal, they define a tangent. And uh, so we, we may think of a pair of points as a billiard trajectory from the first point to the second. And uh, in this picture, the billiard map becomes a rational automorphism of this surface. It turns out that this automorphism is not well-defined everywhere, but uh, this can be made regular after blowing up. And then uh, we have curves LA and LB consisting of the pairs such that the trajectory contains a given point A or B. So we have to each point in the interior of the ellipse, it defines a curve in this surface. And the problem before can be reformulated as follows. So given, and, and also in the more general form, given a surface and three curves on the surface, 
and an endomorphism of the surface, let us call it beta, which is in practice in the example is map. So we, the problem is to describe the set of points in the first curve such that the orbit under iteration of this endomorphism falls eventually into both curves with a different uh, stages. Uh, so after m iterations, it falls into the second curve, and after n iteration, it falls into the third. This problem, so the, the case of the billiard that we have seen is a special case of this problem. And uh, this problem is also in the spirit of the dynamical model lung conjecture studied by authors like Gioca, Tucker, Zhang, Shovu Zhang and others. So we have, uh, we can put the previous billiard problem in a more familiar frame. So the above billiard game is an example when we obtain finiteness. Finiteness of the points on the first curve. And uh, the proof method relies in the results of Barroero, Capuano, and uh, my joint results with Masser. And uh, so these results in, in, turn, in turn involve uh, counting methods developed with PILA. And, but we have another example of exactly the same situation where the methods are entirely different. This situation is the following. We take the, as the surface the projective plane and uh, we may take the simple case of three lines in the projective plane and uh, beta by beta the endomorphism we take simply a linear automorphism of the projective plane. Then the, the powers, the iteration of this linear uh, endomorphism are expressed by a matrix whose entries are linear recurrence sequences. And uh, eventually the problem turns into an equation uh, written here, AM, BN equals CN, DM, where these sequences are linear recurrences. So we, we find the problem now amounts to uh, an equation among four linear recurrences and in two variables. So, and this may be dealt with, uh, also may be dealt to obtain under suitable assumption finiteness, but may be dealt using very different methods. This time we have to use the Schmidt subspace theorem and uh, the corollaries by Everts, uh, Schlickewey, Van der Porten, uh, obtained from the Schmidt theorem to the uh, linear recurrences. So it is, uh, I conclude here, that it is somewhat surprising that uh, two examples formulated in a very similar way, and also with simple objects, uh, surfaces, and uh, lines here and uh, certain curves in the other example, may be treated, both may be treated by but with entirely different methods. So uh, I would stop here and